question time. A Red Zone Alk, a friend of ours from across the Atlantic Ocean who has been asking great questions for years now. If you're Matthew Stafford, do you hope and deserve to be set free from Detroit? Shereen, your thoughts? Well, Mike, you and I remember the curse of Bobby Lane, right? And it's supposedly done because the curse supposedly was only supposed to last 50 years. But this curse continues for the Detroit Lions. They have won one playoff game since that 1957 NFL championship. They have longed for the days of Bobby Lane, and and they haven't had it. So it is a graveyard of quarterbacks. And Matthew Stafford, I am positive, would welcome a change, a move outside of Detroit, somewhere else where he has a chance to succeed, such that Bobby Bobby Lane got traded away. And so, yeah, I think he would welcome that. I don't know if that's going to happen. We know the cap hit and everything else that goes into that. But as a quarterback in Detroit, it just has not worked out for any of those quarterbacks since Bobby Lane. We know his wife would probably like to me- leave Michigan. That's yeah, for damn right. sure. As it relates to Matthew <laughs> Stafford, though, when you've been with that team since 2009. And I remember when they drafted him, like, hey, the 50 years has expired and Bobby Lane and Matthew Stafford went to the same high school. There's a poetry and a symmetry to it. And the Lions are finally going to turn around. And they have been to the playoffs a few times, but they still haven't won a playoff game. It's gotten so bad that in 2016, they commemorated the 25th anniversary of their last playoff win. That is not something you want to be drawing attention to, <laughs> Detroit Lions. So I, 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 if I'm Stafford, I'm ready to move on. I don't know who's going to want him, though, because it's a good question. we've seen him long enough. And I, there, there's just, you know, I've, I used to call him a reluctant franchise quarterback. He didn't want all the trappings of being a franchise quarterback. He doesn't want to be a leader. He doesn't want to be the hard ass. He doesn't want to be the guy who demands in a Peyton Manning, Tom Brady type way that his teammates step up and do what they're supposed to do. He's never seemed like that guy. I just don't know who's going to want him at this point. It could be a bridge situation, Mike. Maybe it's one of these teams that, that drafts a quarterback high and needs a bridge quarterback. Colts didn't draft a guy high, but they needed a bridge quarterback, and they, they signed Phillip Rivers to be that guy. We know the Patriots signed Cam Newton as a bridge quarterback. I see him as a bridge quarterback somewhere, but nowhere long-term unless it just happens that he gets that second chance and it happens to work out there. He could be the next bridge in Indianapolis if they decide not to extend their relationship right. with Philip Rivers a second year. He's a lot younger than Philip Rivers. All right, next question. Champ Biden, after Tampa Bay put together an all-star team and is just slightly above average this year. They're 7-5, and five and they're on a bye this weekend. Does Jameis Winston's stock rise as he goes into a free agent year? You know, it helped Teddy Bridgewater to start five games last year and win them all to get a $22 million a year deal on a three-year contract from the Panthers. What does happen with Jameis Winston after a year with Sean Payton, given that when Drew Brees got hurt this year, it was Taysom Hill, not Jameis Winston. But when you consider the dysfunction with the Bucks, do we look at Jameis Winston more favorably next year? Well, you remember two years ago, Mike, we all thought Teddy Bridgewater was going to leave and go somewhere else, right? And it's not like he got a, a ton of great offers, like he got no starting offers. So he returned to New Orleans. They convinced him to return to New Orleans as a backup quarterback. I could see that happening with Jameis Winston, especially with the way Taysom Hill has thrown the ball. Sean Payton is brilliant, and I've said that repeatedly. He went 5-0 and last season with a backup quarterback, 2-0 and this season, so 7-0 and with, with a backup quarterback that's not named Drew Brees. Drew Brees retires. I could see Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston both playing next year for, for the Saints in some capacity, however they, they framework that offense. But he could figure out some way to get both of those quarterbacks on the field. And I don't know what Sean Payton thinks of Jameis Winston, but I could see that as being a reality. I just don't know that Jameis Winston's going to get a chance to go anywhere and start. So if he's not going to get a chance to start, why wouldn't you return and stay with Sean Payton? And the physicality with which Taysom Hill plays suggests at some point he may get injured, which would give Winston yeah, right. an opportunity to play next year if Hill is the starter, assuming Drew Brees retires. Niners Forever 16 asks... Robert Sala, the 49ers defensive coordinator, to Detroit as head coach. Good choice or no? Sala, a Michigan native. Last year, a much hotter candidate because the team was better. I don't like that element of this. He's a hot candidate because the team is good. This year, the team's struggling, so he's not a hot candidate. Well, you know, now that they're winning some games and their defense is playing well, all of a sudden he's a good coach again. He's That's just again. how it goes. 
And I think he will be on the list again this year. The question is, will he get hired? And also, will he be available sooner rather than later? That's one of the realities of being with a team that makes it to the Super Bowl. You're not available to be hired until uh, after other teams would, would like to fill their vacancies. Well, believe it or not, Mike, Michigan legislators, you would think they would have more to worry about with COVID going on, but they have written a letter to the Lions recommending Robert Sala for the job in Detroit. And he is a Michigan native and he went to a Northern Michigan University. And so I know that's who they want, but you know, it's going to be up to the new GM who he hires. And, and I would assume that Robert Sala will get a lot of interviews everywhere around the league for what he's done with the 49ers. He's done an excellent job. Was there a PS on the letter, get rid of Matthew Stafford? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I would assume yeah. that the powers that be at Michigan may. Not because of Matthew, though, but that's okay. That's okay. Everyone's exercising their free speech rights. No problem with that. All right. Uh, real quickly, Jaguars GB, what direction do the Jags go in regards to their GM situation? Experienced head that knows how to go about things or a young prospect to take the franchise in the right direction. One thing I've noticed about general managers in recent years, Shereen, it's not like recycled coaches. You get your shot, and then that's it. And typically, right. teams look for the ascending general manager, not the person who's getting the second or third bite at the apple. That's just kind of the way it's gone. Yeah, and I like that, Mike. I, I think you should give somebody a, a chance who hasn't had it before. And there's so many names out there that are guys that are you know would relish that opportunity to get that job. And you know, I talked the other day. I think this is the to me the best GM opening of football. You think it's Houston because of Deshaun Watson. I get that. They have the established quarterback. But if you go in Jacksonville, you have a chance to draft your quarterback. And you're probably gonna end up with Justin Fields and you have two first round picks, two second round picks, two fourth rounds picks. You have a ton of cap space, third most right now in the NFL projected for next season. So you've got a lot of things working for you to go into Jacksonville. I think it's a great opening. I think you have a chance with a very patient owner to get something done there. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.